Most of us look at the masks and this whole corona shutdown as a bit of a farce. Captain. We noticed their subversive tactics. We called them out. Black conservatives kind of new punk rock. Uh, we're, we're demonized constantly. Captain. Here we are, we're in Beverly Hills uh, by the Beverly Hills sign. And I guess this has been going on since about three. What time did you get here? Oh, uh, three, three. Yeah, was it here that you you guys met up here? Uh, we actually met up uh, down on the, down that block. I think the uh, that light itself right there. Okay, that's yeah, where so we all met. What, how did you hear about the event first off? Um, I heard about the event from a couple friends earlier, a couple couple weeks back. About a, almost a month now. We've been doing this every week since then. Um, this is just an event for us to come out, show our support for the president and uh, his new re-election uh, campaign of 2000, 2020. So what would you say is the reason that got you excited to want to come all the way down here from Riverside County? Um, just from my perspective, which is also, you know, not does not speak for the everybody from American people, but uh, from a black perspective, uh, our president's done more for the black community uh, than our last black president. That shows a lot of volume to what's wrong with our black communities. Um, when it comes to record low unemployment for African Americans, uh, opportunity zones in our, in our inner cities um, to create business and opportunity for the youth, um, and all these other various things that he's done, like. And um, uh, funding, permanently funding uh, HBCUs, uh, historic black colleges. Uh, these things were the things that I wished uh, Barack Obama did uh, when I voted for him when I was 18 years old, fresh out of high school. And that's why I'm here to support not only the president, but for the African American community, because that is the new way for uh, black conservatives, it's kind of the new punk rock. Uh, we're, we're demonized constantly, uh, especially during this Black Lives Matter movement. but. Uh, overall, this is that's why I'm here is to support the black community because by far that's the only way that our communities are going to succeed is another term with Trump in office. Captain. 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 Can I ask what that flag is anyways? Okay, this flag yeah. is uh, the flag of Armenia, but the white stripes represent the region of Artsakh. Uh, Artsakh region is being threatened uh, for invasion by Azerbaijan. Okay. And the country of Azerbaijan is allied with Turkey, and they hate Armenia ever since they committed the genocide, and they want to continue the genocide, take over what little territory we have, and Artsakh is a very major region, Can you and this region is like uh, ancient Armenian region. Okay. That we've always uh, had, and they're trying to steal it now, currently. Like, it was literally a war right now. Azerbaijan is trying to steal it? Yeah. Okay. And what, what does that have to do with the Trump rally? And, and so, uh, we want, I want all Western nations to unite. So we, we, have, we see Israel uniting with America stronger than ever before. I want Armenia to also unite with America. Because right now, Armenian relations with America are tentative. They go back and forth. There's a marine base there. But I want there to be a more solid relationship between Armenia and America. Okay. Go to your burning and looting and rioting. Stop. Stop. My, my, name, Stop. my name is Drew Penner. I'm a journalist. You don't support I'm here Trump, to... and we support peace, love, and life. 
What's wrong with that? I'm giving you the opportunity to do an interview if you want to do it. Why do you think I'm a Democrat? What makes you think I'm a Democrat? This is an outbreak of disease that started in Wuhan, it's one of the central Chinese cities. Don't ever go for you want to do the Oscar? Or you want me to do the talking? Uh, well, okay. So, uh, what's your first name, man? Captain Corona. That's gonna be the name. C O R O N A. That's right. C O R O N A. Uh, okay. Um, and uh, how old are you, man? Captain Corona. We don't talk about that. Okay. <laughs> and uh, why is that? Why is that? Oh yeah. Why don't you want to give your? Why don't, Captain why don't you Corona give your is ageless and timeless. Okay. Just like Superman. All right. Okay. And uh, what's what was the purpose for coming out here today? Well, the purpose of me coming out here today is to announce where we are going to be in the future if this mass hysteria doesn't stop. So this is all about demasking, getting us to a point where we don't need them anymore. Because if we don't, there's going to be real Captain Coronas running around making sure you've got a mask on just like the one you've got on right now. Uh, I'm not really following you, because are you, uh, it seems like you're against masks, is that oh, right? Oh yeah, yeah, no, I'm definitely against masks. Uh, yeah. then this why is you, my mask. But then you're wearing a mask. Yeah, this is my mask. But, you so know, it's I'm ironic, you're to trying to be ironic, mask. right? If I'm gonna be forced to wear a mask by law, I'm gonna wear the kind of mask I wanna wear, which is Captain Corona. But that, I, I mean, so I don't- I'm gonna ask you, yep. uh, just you know, to give you the, a couple of opinions. Yep. Yep. How many people, in the world have died of coronavirus. And, and I'm not gonna ask for uh, a number, but I'm gonna tell you a couple of comparisons. Far more people die of the flu. I think it was 800,000, I saw it on the, I saw it today, I should Whatever it, it is, the number's far less than H1N1 flu back in, uh, we had a flu, by the way, called uh, the Hong Kong flu back in 1969. So there's a little bit of a clue for you about when, uh, how old I am. Uh, we had a little bit of a, a party after that called Woodstock. That's how we dealt with it. This is the first time in history that we've decided we need masks to try and contain uh, this so-called virus. Now, I'm not going to say that there is no virus. I'm sure there's a virus. I'm sure they call it Corona or COVID or whatever you want to call it. Is it going to kill anybody? Very, very few people. The average age, as most people know, is well into the 80s. I'm definitely nowhere near the 80s, as are you. So I don't see the need for it. How does that make you feel when you see people reacting so viscerally to what you're doing? You know, I blame, I partially blame the media. Um, you know, when he first got elected, there was an entire smear campaign against him. Uh, he didn't really necessarily get the truth. A uh, fair, balanced um, uh, overview of his policies and procedures. And I think that's just what it is that, you know, a lot of people believe all these quotations of, you know, he's racist or he's sexist and misogynistic, but yet they don't read any news articles, they don't click any sources, they don't uh, do their own independent research. Again, you have to remind yourself that a lot of these people don't research politics, they don't stay on top of politics. I have in the past 10 years. Um, and when they make these kind of notations of people on the other side explaining their views, trying to get the word out so other people can vote, can be active, uh, it just shows their ignorance. How do you feel that the rally went today? I think it's great. Uh, the police, they came, they tried to shut us down, uh, but we supported them, we stayed peaceful, we walked to the Beverly Hills mayor's house, and then I guess he sort of eased up because then we came back here, and now the police are not shutting us down anymore. Who eased up? The mayor? Yeah, Beverly Hills mayor. Oh yeah, was he, did, you, did he come out? Was he there at his house? Did you see him? Oh, uh, we didn't see him, uh, but we're pretty sure he was there. I mean. I mean, where else could he be right now? Or at least he was notified, you know, there's protesters here. Yeah. And it seems like the police have kind of calmed down. They were really trying to shut us down in the morning. Really? Yeah. The, the, oh, early on? Yeah. Oh, when you were over there, right? Over, yeah, down so over there? We were right here, everyone was gathered, and then uh -huh. they shut down the street for some reason. Yeah, yeah. And then this oh, unlawful assembly, and they tried to push us out. But we, uh, we, we went to the mayor's house and we walked back, and now it's chill. 
Yeah, yeah. What does that have to do with the I think uh, MAGA? most pro Trumpers uh, look at not all, but most of us look at the masks and this whole Corona shutdown as a bit of a farce. I think most of us know that it's being driven when you have people saying that the coronavirus uh, mask mandate is going to end a few days after the election. I think we know where that's coming from and why that's coming there. Most Trump voters see the coronavirus, uh, these shutdowns and all this, the school closures as a way to leverage some pain into Trump voters. Anyways, I, I guess I want to feel like asking how you feel that went today. Uh, it went good. Uh, I thought we could have been more productive. Um, In what way? I don't necessarily think that, you know, you know, I prefer us having rallies and talking to people on the left. I, I think those are the, those, those conversations need to be had. Um, merely campaigning and protesting is great and all, but, you know, overall, we, we do need to talk about these issues because a lot of people are misinformed. A lot of people, unfortunately, both right and left, believe they're right, absolutely right. And, you know, there's a lot of views that I would change if someone changed my mind about it. And vice versa, I hope other people would change their minds, you know, if I educated them on some facts. But nevertheless, I think we could have been more productive just talking. Um, it's hard to do that through a protest, though, right? It is. It, kind is. Of. it, it is. doesn't matter what side you're on. Yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of a... But I guess it starts the dialogue in a way, right? Yeah. Um, and then were you here last week as well for the yes, one that was last week the last uh, Saturday specifically that one? Yes, the one where um, uh, Two Black Lives Matter uh, protesters actually disrupted our movement our rally uh, The first one was a gentleman with a, uh, I believe with an army shirt or something like that uh, I was actually during that time with those barricades right there If you would see uh, a lot of us were on the right side and of course they were on the left side uh, me and a few of the colleagues would actually uh, use our bullhorns to talk to them, try to talk. Uh, it wouldn't work, they wouldn't want to talk. A few people tried, but again, in the mix of us talking and actually getting through to some of them and you know, expressing our own ideas, uh, two of their own kind of disrupted the, uh, the event, uh, tried to snatch American flags at people, peaceful protesters, uh, arms, and uh, ended up fighting to where the police officers were forced to use tear gas and close down the one person even got arrested actually last week. Um, I, I don't know what side. I don't know what which, side. Which person? But. Uh, but I do. I'm an eyewitness to two of them uh, disrupting our uh, our peaceful rally when I was trying to talk to them through the barricades, you know, to talk about policies and, and our differences. And if there was someone arrested, then from my personal opinion, I think it was those in the left. We've been here for a few months. We're going to continue to be here until Trump's reelected. Okay, uh, what uh, city are you from? Uh, Beverly Hills. Oh, so you're, are you actually, you're, you're local, right? Yeah. Beverly, you're the first local person I met. Well, thank you. Nice to be here. Beverly Hills, uh-huh. What's the message you're trying to get out at this, uh, at this rally, would you say? I want all people who believe in capitalism, people who believe in uh, bi bi like owning any size of business, small business, big business, doesn't matter. Uh, if you believe in any in family values, in America as a country, everyone has to come together. So whatever your issue is, if you love America, we, we have to come together. Is there more people this week of you than last um, week? Or maybe there's a little less. less. There's less this week. There was more last week. Um, I think it had to do with um, the tear gas that was deployed last week. But you haven't seen any like the Black Lives Matter or people disrupting the, the rally today? Have uh, you? No. Actually, me and another colleague, um, Another person uh, tried to speak to the Black Lives Matter protesters. Last week this or this week? week? No, uh, today. Oh, so there were some people that came yes. through. Yeah. And um, it's on YouTube. I mean, it's going to be on social media. Yeah, really? uh, there was a couple of agitators. They came. We noticed their subversive tactics. We called them out. Uh, Where? By the mayor's house or here? Right here. Like, a guy came and he was like, fuck Donald Trump. But then we talked to him and he turned out to be a libertarian. And the left is completely intolerant towards libertarians. So we basically turned his ideology around to basically he has to support conservatism, but he, hates, he still said fuck Trump at the end. But the argument was that the new recent event of um, Dick yeah. Blake, um, his, his incident compared to uh, the black lives that were killed in Chicago every weekend, both children, 16 year olds, kids, and we, you know, a friend of mine wanted to point out that all, all black lives matter. And why does media fail to mention the Chicago members uh, if black lives do matter? 
And, so wait, uh, so you're saying that the you're just saying that like the fact that there's so much crime and you know poverty or whatever leads to deaths every week in Chicago. Is that what you're kind of saying? That we, that's that's what one of my friends was arguing with the other Black Lives Matter. I'm just trying to make sure I understand. Yeah, yes. what it, what the argument yeah. is. So that was kind of the argument. They were going back and forth as to uh, and, and why. And you think Trump would make it better and make less murders and stuff happen on a daily basis in Chicago because of economic opportunities? Is that yeah. the, that, the, the, am that, I understanding that? That's kind of where yeah. we're getting at, yeah. is that the policies of empowering the black community, uh, not giving them handouts like uh, the famous Obama phone or uh, liberal ideologies that uh, give them free handouts and um, things like that. So of course, if you're in poverty, you need help, but we need the opportunity zones to keep going for another four years so that developing businesses and opportunity can happen in the black community so that we can move away from those handoffs that we've been stuck with that unfortunately the Democratic Party has given us for the past five decades. And that was, so that was the argument that uh, both one of my friends and um, a BLM protester, uh, they were going back and forth in that kind of dichotomy, but... Where was that? Was that here? Was over there. There was a lot of yelling, not necessarily yelling from both sides, but one particular side, I'm not going to mention. Mm -hmm. um, it's just unfortunate because you're in the mix of all these Black Lives Matter riots and peaceful protesters, which again, I don't need a movement to tell me that my life matters. Um, it's sad that the black community, we cannot talk about this. We can't have common dialogue from both sides, um, both on the right and left on these issues, because we all want the same thing. We're just thinking at it through different colored rose glasses, and that's where the argument happens. So it's just very sad that. Uh, and, uh, you know, it would be really helpful if I could actually quote your name because then I can actually I quote you. Yeah, you know, because they won't, they won't let me use the quotes if well, I can't well, okay. use your first name uh, and last name, right? Okay. Uh, you know. John. John. Wait. I don't believe you. Of course you don't. Because I just quote you. But that's the name I'm going to go. I, I, I can't. I can't. Well, I'm not going to be able to quote yeah, you. I can, I can refer to a couple things, but I'm just that. saying for you, I'm just letting you know. For any real journalist, for the most part, if yeah. they're doing their but, job, they're not allowed to actually I know, use, I, use quotes unless but, it's uh, not, first name last name, right? Now, I'll give you a little bit of a background. Yeah. Uh, I was a, a reporter at CNN for many years. Okay. So I got to know that part of it myself. I know myself. <laughs> but uh, we have to get every story. Uh, you know, if we used a source, we have to get it and check it from five different places. And the reason that was was because right around the time I started, one of our reporters had uh, report had reported that Steve Jobs had died and the stock collapsed after that. Uh, that would turned out to be not true. Uh, the, uh, they didn't get the story properly and the story ran on CNN. They ran it as Steve Jobs, president of Apple, had died or whatever. And uh, that was about five years before he actually died. That cost Apple about a hundred billion dollars in a market value because of that. The FCC got involved. The SEC got involved. They threatened CNN. They came like seconds away from losing their license over that story. They, they got so close. So, and a couple of days later, the president came down and said, "Okay, how many uh, how many times do we get every story that we do?" They said three. He said it's five from now on. So that's right what I started. So whenever I did your job, I had to get five different references to make sure that it was absolutely. 100. And then that suddenly changed when they became a leftist propaganda organization. Right? One day it just sort of all changed. And, uh, you know, all these people were coming in from these uh, weird organizations that I'd never heard of before and uh, were like basically indoctrinated in real hard left, ultra leftist uh, ideology. And they were carrying that into their journalism. I personally didn't, I wasn't doing politics. I was, you know, the anchor of a travel show. So it didn't bother me. So, um, and then when I left, uh, another guy named Anthony Bourdain took over my show. So, before him, it was me. Oh, wow. That's cool, man. All right, hey, look, what do you think? It says CNN. See, CNN, the media yeah, lies. I got that shirt. <laughs> in your it. eyes, man. So, you're <laughs> play, You're trying to play me, then. You know the drill. Well, I, I don't, you know how it is. You know what I mean. I also know, know the consequences. I own businesses. I have some other you know, things that I have to deal with. I have to be very careful. And this is But it's room. also, a, you're going to this effort to do this performative thing. Wouldn't it be great to be able to, uh, to yeah, share that be, information it, it with people? It would be really great if I could you know, make sure that I could actually have an opinion and express myself without getting canceled or without getting gone. You're canceled.
canceling yourself, though. That's what I'm saying. Well, You're canceling yourself yeah, by I not allowing know, yourself. But, but I mean, I've got a business that I've got a family, and I have to be very careful about. I, I appreciate what you're saying, but I can't. I just can't. I mean, don't blame me. Blame my, the liberals that have caused all these problems. I would love to be able to go and say what I want to say. My message is still still the same, whether I've got a mask on or I don't have a mask on. The message remains the same. Okay. It's just that you're not going to know who actually said it for a lot of reasons. It's the same reason people go anonymous when they, you know, on the police uh, witness protection program, right? I have well, to I hope worry you haven't about committed my safety a, yeah, yeah. and my family's safety after I go on camera and give my opinion or something. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's the world we live in today. I'm not going to be murdered or killed or hurt or harmed by a bunch of Trump supporters. I'm going to be murdered, harmed, or hurt by some, uh, you know, wacky leftists that are going to try and attack me. And I see it here every week. If we come here, we see what happens, right? Yeah. So that's why I do this. What kind of mask is that? Uh, where did you find that? Or like, uh, is it Venom? Or, oh, it's just a regular mask? Okay, cool, man. Well, thanks for your time. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah.